Hello there, my fellow tank drivers, and welcome. Welcome back to another one of my older series, which unfortunately I haven't updated in quite some time. Except in this case, I do have a more valid reason, in the form of kinda running out of content. After all, we did go through most of the tanks, APCs and artillery the Imperial Guard has. But rejoice, for today I actually found something that I didn't talk about before. Ladies and gentlemen, behold, the Death Strike Missile Launcher. Get me closer, I wanna hit them with my sword. Also, not to be confused with the actual Death Strike Space Marines chapter. Do stay until the end too, and vote on another topic. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Death Strike Missile Launcher is a mobile ballistic, you guessed it, missile launcher of the Imperial Guard, which is capable of firing the Intercontinental Ballistic Death Strike Missile. This is often equipped with a warhead that is classified as a weapon of mass destruction. It is built upon a Chimera modified chassis, like many other Imperial Guard vehicles, to which a complex launching system has been added that is obviously capable of launching the famous Death Strike missile. In the past, it started becoming a rare sight on the battlefield, due to Imperial Commander's concern about its vulnerability, the danger it posed to even friendly units, and their preference for other, more mobile and flexible artillery such as the Basilisk. The Death Strike launchers are only found on the most apocalyptic of battlefields, and they are only ever used when the total annihilation of the enemy is absolutely necessary, and even then only after the unit firing it has been authorized to do so by Segmentum Command. This vehicle launches a single, intercontinental, solid fuel ballistic missile, with an operational range of several thousand kilometers. When the missile detonates, everything caught in the blast radius is instantly consumed by an immense thermonuclear fireball that can vaporize pretty much anything up to and including armored vehicles and buildings. Just one well-placed shot of a Death Strike missile launcher is more than capable of destroying an entire army. Due to the immense destructive capability of the Death Strike tactical warhead, and the fact that it may need to be used while allies are still caught in the weapon's blast radius. Once a Death Strike launcher has been authorized for use, the Imperial Guard regiment employing the launcher will usually assign a very loyal commissar to ensure that the weapon is in fact fired, no matter the target or the consequences implied for any loyal Imperial forces. Until more recently, the Death Strike was a weapon in decline, the deployment of even one of these things required a huge investment of resources. The acquisition of these weapons is a process littered by religious and administrative complexity, and can take solar months even to get one. Even the construction of a Death Strike missile is a procedure whose worth in the Imperium's wars had to be carefully weighed before commencement. Each component must be duly sanctified and blessed by hallowed oil then arrayed as the catechisms of manufacture are intoned in full. A coterie of tech priests then sets about the process of wiring guidance skulls to each of the warhead's actuators. Finally, the mounting ceremony, in which the missile is racked on its firing platform, is accompanied by its own solemn ritual. As a death strike is only requested to fulfill the direst of contingencies, the battles for which they are requested are often, and ironically, long over by the time the weapon actually gets there. That is not to say that the Death Strike missile launchers never see any use, for their formidable value and situational versatility are legendary. Over the past millennia, they have been used against pretty much every enemy of the Imperium. The warhead can be armed with a variety of horrifying payloads too, each Death Strike missile tailored to wreak maximum damage on an intended enemy. With just one successful launch, a Death Strike armed with a God Spear, for example, can bring down an enemy Titan. It can punch the towering war engine off its feet among a false sun of a reactor meltdown. Another well-placed missile can deliver a virulent pathogen to the core of an army. 
It can wipe out the entire command structure of the enemy in a holocaust of billowing plasma, or crush the morale of a wavering army with its sudden godlike wrath. But the most terrifying of all are the venerated Vortex missiles. These warheads are able to sunder reality itself in a roiling wave of warp energy guaranteeing the annihilation of anything caught in the blast. Vortex warheads are in fact so rare that the improper launch of one is punishable by summary execution. Very few weapons within the Imperial Guard arsenal are considered so destructive that to sanction their deployment without due cause and clear purpose is a capital offense. Such weapons are designated as Ordnance Extremis by the Departamento Munitorum. And you guessed it, the most destructive among these implements is the Death Strike missile launcher. A Death Strike can exhibit a huge range and destructive capability, launching one intercontinental ballistic missile, which by itself is almost the size of a tank. Each of these colossal rockets is able to visit the wrath of the Emperor upon a target half a world away, allowing the Imperial Guard to stab deep into the heart of enemy-held territory or an advancing army. Calculating these long-range trajectories can take a lot of time, however, and the volatile machine spirit of the missile must be entreated before it is sent hurtling onto its martyr's journey. A Death Strike launcher preparing to fire becomes the priority for the enemy. The sheer size of its armament allows even the most animalistic of Xenos to understand its apocalyptic purpose. Because, obviously, the bigger the rocket, the more dangerous it is, right? As a slow-moving asset with only minimal firepower outside its main munition, the Death Strike often requires the presence of an escort and guardians so as not to present the enemy with a valuable and relatively easy target. For the Departamento Minitorum, simple logistics has precluded its deployment in all but the most dire circumstances. It is also a mark of how dark the days of the Imperium have become, especially in the wake of the Great Rift's birth, that a brutal and horrifying new tactic has appeared, one which has given a veritable renaissance to the Death Strike missile launcher. Held behind Imperial lines, the Death Strikes lurk out of sight, remaining as undetected as possible, awaiting their moment. When the enemy threatens catastrophic breakthrough, or a suitable valuable target presents itself, waves of Imperial infantry are sent to bog down the enemy. You can see where this is going. Then, fed some short-range combat launch coordinates, the Death Strikes discharge their terrifying weapons directly into the heart of battle. As the missile descends, friend and foe alike are immolated among the unleashed blast wave. These measures are as inhumane as they are desperate, but in these times, no sacrifice is too great to ensure the survival of humanity. The Death Strike missile launcher can be armed with a single intercontinental ballistic Death Strike missile which, in turn, can be outfitted with several different types of warheads, including biological, tactical nuclear, and titan killer Godspear warheads. But by far the most common is the plasma warhead, which can vaporize almost anything in a very large radius by unleashing a potent thermonuclear plasma reaction. The rarest warhead used by them is the ancient Vortex warhead. The Death Strike launcher's operational range of thousands of kilometers is one that no other Imperial artillery piece can even come close to matching, and the destructive force that can be unleashed by a single Death Strike missile is beyond the capabilities of any other artillery used by the Imperium. Of course, the vehicle is also armed with a hull-mounted heavy boulder for protection, even though the Death Strike usually will never ever go close to the enemy. The heavy bolter can be replaced by a heavy flamer. It can also be modified with camouflage netting, a hunter-killer missile launcher, a dozer blade, a pintle-mounted heavy stubber or storm bolter, a searchlight, smoke launchers, and extra armor plating. A few battles famous for having seen the use of these weapons include The Battle of Septimius II it is only the rarest of commanders with an intrinsic understanding of ballistic warfare 
that can fully put the true obliterating power of the Death Strike to use. One such commander was Xandar Atlan of the Talarn 115 Farmered Regiment. On the world of Septimius II, his own tank companies were engaged by orc warbands on three different fronts, spanning several dozen miles. On the verge of being overwhelmed by the orcs, Atlan ordered all three of the columns to withdraw into the Copper Flats. As the ever bellicose Greenskins gave chase, the armored companies were instructed to retreat along paths that intersected each other. The launch of the single Death Strike missile Atlan had at his disposal was timed so that it struck exactly where the pursuing orcs were converging. The Battle for Antimian IV It was during the battle for the capital city on Antimian IV that Consul Kolchenko of the Adeptus Minotaurum irritated at being relegated to carrying out artillery barrages far from the front line, took it upon himself to show his mettle to his Imperial Guard counterparts, and ordered a Death Strike missile at the presumed position of the Soul Drinkers. This would prove to be a catastrophic mistake, because it opened a huge hole to the city catacombs, where an army of grotesques belonging to the Dark Eldar Prince Carhedros was stored. These monstrosities were subsequently unleashed, along with hordes of Slaneshi demons upon the Imperial defenders. The Battle of Barak VI Orc Lutas infiltrated the 52nd Army Artillery Park and captured one of the three Death Strike missile launchers located there. Later, they deployed the weapon against the Imperials fighting for control of Barak VI from the Orc invaders. The cataclysmic explosion destroyed two armored regiments and their command Baneblade, the Steel Might. After a two-year investigation of how the weapon came to be stolen by the Greenskins, no less than 12 Imperial generals were executed for their election of duty. Even during the Third War for Armageddon, the Death Strike batteries located in Hive Hell's Reach were able to assist in the defense of Hive Volcanus from the onslaught of the Orcs even though the batteries themselves were located half a planet away. So, for today's poll, it is gonna be very straightforward, as this time I only have one question. Would you like to see a video on Imperial Subterranean Vehicles? These will include, but not restricted to, the Termite and the Hades Drill. I'm mostly asking because there is only little lore on them, and it might result in a short video but you can vote on whether this is a topic you'd like to see or not. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the actually pretty famous Death Strike missile launcher for today. I do remember a couple of people asking me some time ago, since the Imperium uses all these devastating weapons, why don't they use some good old-fashioned nukes? Well, the answer is they do with the vehicle right here. Is the Death Strike launcher, or the Death Strike missile rather, among your favorite weapons of the Imperium? Do share any thoughts, opinions, or questions about it in the comments below if you want. If you found the video informative or entertaining, please consider clicking the like, subscribe, and share buttons for more content. Thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you all a great and healthy day. The Emperor protects.